Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Bill Daniels, K3WD, and he asks a question about antenna height and whether or not it can affect the resonant frequency. Well, first of all, let's review law number one of all antennas, and it is this. Everything affects everything. Okay, so the height above ground will affect the tune frequency of it, will affect the impedance, uh, all kinds of things like that. Okay, now, you see, the thing is, we want to think that it's the pieces of wire that are resonant. If you have the end of it too close to a metal mast, the mast can become part of the antenna and affect uh, the tuning. That's why I recommend keeping the mast and the end of the antenna about three feet away from each other with rope because of that very fact that it really helps decouple the mast from the antenna. Also, of course, if you're feeding the dipole in the traditional way of not putting a bell in there and just hooking the wires to it, you've got the outside shield of the coax is affecting the length of the wire and will change the resonant frequency and so on. He says, can the height of an antenna affect the tune frequency? Yes. My tune my 80 meter dipole with the ends at a height so I could reach them. I tuned it for 3700 kilohertz, which is middle-ish of the band. It's like down, I think that's in the advanced segment. 3700 kilohertz is in the advanced and amateur extra segment. It's the boundary there. When I hauled it up to about 40 feet, the tune frequency changed to 3800 kilohertz. It's now a 75 meter antenna. I put 75 at more like uh, 3.9 megahertz or something like that. But yeah, in that in that range, that's now in the general uh, range. You commented in an article about the height's effect on impedance. You said that a half wavelength for 160 meters was 123 feet. I had that wrong, uh, as you point out here correctly. The optimum height for an antenna and I'll give you my reasons why, is a half wavelength. And the reason for that is you get a single null off the side of the antenna, you go any higher, and a double null starts to form. You can go somewhat higher and somewhat lower the main low, but you go too much and you're starting to throw power away into a, a pretty high lobe. Now, if you're using this for NVIS or something like that, then that's fine. You are going to have it fairly low. Not as low as a lot of people think you need to have it, but uh, somewhere around there. The effect of ground cannot be avoided. No. I do not know anybody who lives in free space. Even on the uh, space station, you've got this great big metal counterpoise right there that's going to affect your antenna output. Nobody lives in free space. They just don't. So. I still cannot get my antenna that high, but the effect of the distance above ground is significant for heights up to 63 feet. This is not a problem for 40 meters. The optimum height for a 40 meter antenna is around 66 feet. Now, will it work at 30 feet? Sure it will. It's just that more of the radiation will go up. I'm going to show you a little exception to that in just a minute. Relatively easy to get the antenna up to 32 feet. I apparently left the impression that the optimum height is a quarter wavelength. It's not. It's a half wavelength. But let me show you what happens. Okay, here we are. If you look at the ground, this is up, and you look at the sides, you're looking end on a dipole. You see that the, if you have it at that right height, this is the wave shape of that. Okay, and it goes out here the same way too. This is your pointing angle, okay? Now, if you make the antenna higher, that'll push this down a little bit, but now you'll start to get a little bit of a second lobe forming. And by the time you get it too much down, half of the power is in the other lobe, and you don't want that. But I want you to notice something here. Yeah, that may not be the greatest, but watch this. In your output from your modeling program, it traces this as 180 degrees, okay, so it's a circle. Here's 45, here's 90, here's 180 over here. 
well, let's say it's 45 but now watch this here's the 3 dB point here's the 6 dB point what's one s unit 6 so if you take this line right here and you trace it on out like that. This signal right here, this signal is optimum. This signal is one S unit lower. Okay, can you handle an S unit? You know, if you're willing to dig into the noia, one S unit is not very much, really, as long as you've got a fairly clear channel. If you've got a real noisy channel, yeah, you want it to max power. But if you're working with something where the channel isn't super noisy and you're an S unit down, it'll mean that the other guy will be an S unit down coming inside and your preamp can handle that just fine if you use a preamp. Okay, so saying that this is the main lobe of the antenna is a misnomer. The main lobe of the antenna is actually at the 3 dB point, which is here and here. So here's your main lobe of the antenna okay it goes up fairly high down low here like that if you come down here to s just uh, an s unit single s unit 6 db you can do pretty well with just about any antenna this is why you can put up an 80 meter antenna that isn't all that high in the air and still get some dx out of the thing okay because you're working down here at the sides at the margins. So with that in mind, I think we can just say that, yeah, you can do pretty well with an antenna, any type of antenna, because you may not be getting it right on the main low, but if you're just one S unit down, the guy, instead of hearing you S9, hears you S8. And instead of you hearing him S9, you hear him S8. Is that a condition for good communications? The answer is yes, it is. So. There you have it. I hope that helps a little bit. And sorry about the error I made in that old issue of QST. The optimum height for an antenna using my criterion definitions is a half wave above the ground. If you go dramatically lower, if, if, if you take an antenna, I did this. Some people were so proud of their 100 foot tall tower and they had a 20, 17, 15, 12, 10 antenna on top of it. Man, this was Ham Radio Deluxe. Well, I ran that through the software for modeling antennas, and you would not believe the number of lobes on that antenna. I mean, it was like flower petals on that. This is why a number of DX amateurs will put the same antenna down lower, and then again down lower, and again down lower on the tower. Four copies of it. Why are they doing that? Because one of those will have the best signal. The other three may be on those uh, nulls and not be able to get anything at all. So there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Until we next meet, 73.